<laughs> so Irene asked me to say a few words, um, a few words about my personal background, um, and I see what she said about me already. So um, there's a quite a distance, I guess, between that first one-room country schoolhouse <laughs> and um, being at Kalamazoo College for 27 years. So I'll fill that in just a little bit. Um, I always loved science. I always loved math as I was coming through my um, early years of education. I think it's because I loved getting answers to questions. You know, I'm not, I, I do enjoy philosophy, but I'm not really good at it because I like to have answers to questions, whereas uh, philosophy always seemed, you know, just asking questions. Um, so I do, I do enjoy things where there are answers to be found. Um, when I was coming through my educational experience, um, I, of course, was one of the very few girls who was interested in science and math. And, um, and that never bothered me. And I was just telling Irene, that never, ever bothered me. I always loved getting the top score in a class of guys, you know? I, <laughs> I really did. I, I thought it was great. Um, of course, times change. I mean, as you get to higher and higher levels, you're not going to get the top scores necessarily and everything. Um, but I, I did really um, always enjoy my educational experiences where I was. I have to say, though, that I did not actually think there were women in science. Um, as when I was going through my educational experience, I sort of thought I might be the first, you know. <laughs> but I, I never recognized that there were other women in science. I never saw them. Um, and I was describing to Irene when I was reading about experiments that were done by scientists, the assumption was that all the scientists were male. And now sometimes when I go back and, and read things and find out that actually they weren't, but I didn't know that because we just referred to people by their last names. So, you know, your citations are your last name and the dates. And so um, it's interesting to think that I don't think that women in my generation had very many role models that were recognized. So most of the time, we were interested enough on our own to follow this pathway, but we didn't actually have other women we were talking to or people we were looking up to that we thought we could follow in their footsteps. I think each of us sort of thought we were making our own way by ourselves. And I do um, enjoy, one of the things I have enjoyed very much about being here at Worcester is uh, hearing sometimes, or overhearing sometimes, women faculty members talking with each other about their experiences. Because when I was a faculty member, I didn't have any other women faculty members to talk with about the experiences that I was having. So I, well, I think we have a long way to go. <laughs> I do think there's been a lot of progress, and it's, it's really good to have seen that progress uh, during my lifetime. So when I first arrived at Worcester, um, I wondered why we had three libraries. And I had been in institutions where the library renovations or the, uh, the large changes that had occurred in libraries were to consolidate them and to bring them together. And at least in several different places that I was aware of, that coming together involved bringing a science library, which had been in a separate, usually science building, into the fold with all the other library materials. And so when I came to Worcester, as I said, and I knew that the um, Andrews and Galt were these beautiful libraries, I wondered uh, why the the science library hadn't been moved into Andrews and Gall. And so without telling me anything about the place, um, Mark Crystal, who was the director of libraries at the time, sort of smiled when I said that. And he said, well, come and see Timken. So he brings me over to Timken. And of course, we walk up the stairs. And I'm just like, oh my god, this is incredible. So then I understood why, in fact, Timken had been renovated in 1998 instead of being folded into the other libraries. This is a very, very special space. It is inspiring. And when I looked around here in this particular location where we are right now, I felt that this is where I would want to study. And my first month here at the college, I didn't have an office. And in fact, I did bring my computer over, and I spent a lot of time in this very space. However, as we've noted before, while this beautiful space celebrates many great thinkers and writers and musicians and scientists, from Shakespeare to Plato to Beethoven to Darwin, there is definitely something missing. In fact, there are many someones missing. And as our new librarian at the college, Irene Harold, noted immediately when she arrived on campus, as she stated, there are no women or anyone from underrepresented groups recognized here as we look around at the names in this, in this space. 
So vowing to remedy this, Irene authorized our science librarian, Zach Sherrill, and his associate, May Evans, to apply for the grant that she mentioned from the State Library of Ohio. And as we all know, they were very successful in securing that funding that will be providing the busts and portraits of the hidden science superstars who are not currently represented as we look around the space. But how to select those superstars? I think Zach and May made a brilliant decision to involve the entire campus in this selection process. And nominations, as we know, came from all corners of the campus. And I want to call out um, the first year seminar that was actually called Hidden Figures, Past, Present, and Future, that was taught by Dr. Jennifer Eisen. Is Jennifer here? I don't think I saw her walk in. But anyway, it was a great, a great opportunity for students to get engaged in this project. And I understand that a number of nominations came actually from that class. In addition, of course, um, the CDI, the STEM Success Initiative, the Justice Panel at MLK Day, all of those were opportunities to engage various populations of students here on the campus to come up with nominations for new honorees to be added to this space. And um, it turned out that there were 44 unique names that were, that were suggested by all the nominations that came in, and those were narrowed down to 12 finalists. Each member of the college campus could then vote for up to four candidates from this list of finalists. And I understand that in the end, there were 332 um, students who voted for the finalists. So today is the big reveal. So I want to first say thanks to Irene Harold and Zach Shero and Mae Evans and all of those who took part in the selection process. Thanks, of course, also to the State Library of Ohio. Because of all of your efforts, this beautiful space will now become more welcoming and inclusive for all members of our community. I've been receiving updates of this project all along the way throughout the year, and I am so excited now to see the final four gives a new meaning to final four. <laughs> so without further ado, let me turn this over to Zach Cheryl so that we can all hear the good news. Zach?